10 Craziest Scientists. Before we dive right into this video, let's take a quick look at one of our viewers' comments. Inferno Gaming had this to say. Awesome vid, bro. Keep it up. Thanks for watching and commenting, Inferno Gaming. Now, back to our video. Number 10, Craig Venter. It was during one moment back in May of 2010 when Craig Venter summoned a press conference in order to inform the congregation that he had just created a new species of bacteria. After a 20 year mission, Venter and several others were able to create the world's first synthetic bacteria with no extra genes. It's being described as the world's first designer organism to ever exist. The organism, dubbed JCVI-SYN 3.0, is able to live and eat, while most notably being able to self-replicate. This was such a big deal that even President Obama got involved. Number 9. George Malcolm Stratton George Stratton was an American psychologist who studied sensory perception back in the 1890s. He believed that the human brain was capable of adapting and adjusting itself if one's vision were to be altered upside down. He wanted to prove himself right, and he did just that. He wore glasses that inverted his vision, and for four days he felt ill and disoriented. On day five, however, his brain started switching things right side up, and after eight days, his eyes finally adjusted. Once he removed the glasses, it took him several days to recover and finally see the world right side up again. Finally, after enduring through many headaches, he proved that the brain is able to adapt to environmental pressures. He also said that the upside down world was less confusing. Number eight, Carrie Mulis. The American biochemist thanks hallucinogens for contributing to his win of the 1993 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Mulis first tried LSD back in 1966. It was after that LSD was made illegal and that he and some of his student colleagues were able to figure out and create hallucinogens that were still technically legal. He stated that these hallucinogens helped train his mind to create visual ideas that led him to a way to copy DNA. He says that without those hallucinogens, he doesn't believe he ever would have came up with a method of polymer erase chain reaction. Number 7. Kevin Warwick Kevin Warwick is a British engineer and professor of cybernetics that's been obsessed with turning himself into a cyborg. Back in 1998, he had an RFID transmitter placed underneath his skin, and he was able to turn on lights, heaters, and other devices controlled by a computer that were in proximity. In another instance, he had a neural interface placed on his nervous system in 2002 that allowed a robotic arm to recreate the same movements of Warwick's own arm. His wife even got an array implanted into her, and they ended up becoming the first, quote, purely electronic communication between the nervous system of two humans. He's still doing experiments to this day. Number six, August Beer. August Beyer was once a German physician who wanted to create a better anesthetic technique than what was currently used back in 1898. Beyer believed that it was possible for him to administer an injection of liquid cocaine into the area near his patient's spinal cords. That way the patients could be completely numb without having to be put to sleep. He did try it out on a few patients, but ended up trying to do it on himself to really feel what was going on. When his assistant messed up, Bayer numbed his assistant's leg instead and severely beat him to see if he would feel any pain. The assistant probably quit after all that, but Bayer is credited with being the father of spinal anesthesia. Number five, Andreas Wall. It was earlier this year that a Norwegian physicist named Andreas Wall went to extreme measures in order to prove his hypothesis that the laws of physics would keep him out of harm's way. By dangling off the side of this building with nothing but the rope that's attached to him, Wall fell to the ground below when the weight at the other end of the rope was released. His theory proved correct when the weight wrapped around the pipe fast enough to stop him from actually hitting the ground. At 46 feet high and no safety equipment, Wall truly put his trust in the laws of physics. Number four, Stubbins Firth. This next scientist is pretty famously known throughout history, and not by what he accomplished, but by what he didn't accomplish. It was back in 1793 when the yellow fever epidemic was all the rage. Stubbins Firth was just a mere medical student at the time, and his goal was to prove that malaria isn't contagious. Of course, we now all know that malaria is in fact contagious. Firth ended up spreading infected vomit into his own open wounds and smeared it all into his eyeballs. Remarkably, he never contracted the disease. Why is that, you ask? Some people believe that the vomit he used was from patients who had late-stage malaria and weren't contagious anymore. Others say it's because he didn't inject their infected blood straight into his bloodstream. Firth was pretty lucky, but then again, he did smear vomit in his eyes for nothing. Number three, Werner Forsman. It was back in 1929 that heart surgery was still in its earliest stages of development 
treatment, which proved difficult for physicians who were struggling to help cardiac patients at the time. Forsman believed that it was possible for him to make his way to the heart by inserting a hollow tube through the veins of his patients. However, his fellow colleagues in Eberswald, Germany, explained to him that such a procedure would initially spell disaster and prove to be fatal. Of course, he went through with it on himself. A nurse had begged him to do the operation on her instead of on himself, but when he put her under anesthesia, he proceeded to shove a catheter up his arm and somehow managed to guide it to his heart. He then walked down to the x-ray lab to show everyone his accomplishment. It would be years later that Forsman would win the Nobel Prize in medicine. Can you imagine if he didn't win? That would be the ultimate snub. Number two, Sir Henry Head. Sir Henry Head was a British neurologist with a fascination for how pain functioned but he couldn't quite figure out exactly how it worked. It was during the beginning of the 19th century that Head spent those early years conducting interviews with patients who were suffering from nerve damage in order to figure out what they felt exactly. A good amount of years had passed and all he had to show for his hard work were nothing more than faint narratives from patients who didn't care about his work in the slightest, so he thought it best to move on. Eventually, he began to experiment on himself after he had a piece of his radial nerve removed by a surgeon friend, thus severing his essential motor functions. He would then record and descriptive detail the pain he felt. He would be awarded a knighthood and a number of Nobel Prize nominations. Before we reveal number one, let us know in the comments below which one of these scientists you think is the craziest, and don't forget to subscribe. And now, number one, Barry Marshall. Let this next story be a lesson to all of you. This Australian doctor named Barry Marshall figured it out that it was completely plausible for bacteria to survive inside of the human stomach because he knew that bacteria was the cause of ulcers. Now, Barry had monitored his patients with ulcers and saw that they were completely cured when they were placed on antibiotic therapy. Unfortunately, no one believed him as they would always tell him that it was impossible. And when he tried to publish his new discovery, it was reported that he was laughed out of the medical fraternity's conferences. So what did Marshall end up doing? Naturally, he ingested some bacteria. Within a few days time, he developed all the symptoms and went on to cure himself with antibiotics after he isolated the bacteria. Marshall would then go on to win the Nobel Prize in Physiology. 